Hi, in this video we are going to look at how to get input from the user and use that input in a Python program. Uh, in the previous tutorial we looked at how to create variables and how we can use variables to store data inside our program and then use or modify that data later on. And so this time we're going to look at rather than just specifying what that data is or what the values of those variables are in the program code, we're going to allow the user to enter input on the keyboard and that will be the value stored inside a variable. Okay, so to start with for this program, I'm going to um, create a variable that stores the user's name and um, we're going to ask the user to enter in the name. So I'm going to create a new variable called username. So username equals. And then instead of putting in a value as a string, for example, Joe, we're going to allow the user to enter the value. So in Python 3, we can use the function input. If we're using Python 2.7, you would use the function raw input instead. Okay. So I'm going to say username equals input. And then in brackets, if I like, I can specify uh, a string or a message that's going to be displayed to the user. For example, enter your name. All right, now I can go and use that username variable, um, its value throughout the program. So for example, on the next line, I might um, display a little message here saying hello there, and then concatenate or join the username onto the end of that message. So if we save this code and then run it, we could enter a name. So let's go with that name again, Joe. And we see that uh, little print statement there saying hello there, Joe. Now, the thing is about uh, the thing about the input function is that whatever value we enter, whether it's letters, whether it's just numbers, or something else, it's always by default going to be stored as a string value. So what we could do just to show that is we can say print, and we can print out the data type. See what data type the username variable is. So we can say print type and put in that variable username save and run and we can enter in Joe and it says here class string class str which is string but if we were to run that again and this time enter a number instead of a uh, string like seven it's still going to say class string now that might not be a problem if you want to store numbers in your program and keep them as a string value. But if you're wanting to go and use those numbers for some kind of calculation, maybe you're going to add numbers together or multiply, whatever it is, then you need to store those numbers as either integers or floats, depending on whether they're whole numbers or numbers with a decimal point. So we can actually force uh, our program, rather than just storing the value entered by the user as a string, we can tell our program what we would like that data stored as, whether we want it stored as a string or an integer or a float or something else. So if I want to store the input as an integer, um, what I'm going to do firstly, I'll just get rid of this code and I'm going to create a new variable called number and I'm going to say number equals input, enter a number. And I might create another variable called number two, so equal to input, enter a number. And then I'm going to do a little print statement here saying number one or number plus number two. Okay, now if we save that code and run it, and we enter a first number, and let's just say we're going to add 10 and 5 together. So we enter the first number, which is 10, and we enter a second number, which is 5. We see this result here, which looks like 105. And 10 plus 5 is not 105. But what it's actually doing is because these two values are stored as strings, it's actually concatenating or joining 10. Oops, so we have 10 here and five here. It's actually just joining or putting them next to each other. So it's not actually um, carrying out any addition there. It's just joining the two values, putting that next to each other. 
and we could prove that. We can prove that they're strings. We can say print str number, oh, sorry, type, print type number, and print type number two. Again, we can go and enter those numbers in. And we see that same result, and we see that they're both strings. So if we want to force these to be integers, what we can actually do is say number equals, and then we can wrap this whole input statement inside int. So we say int, and then a bracket, and then put the whole input statement inside those brackets there. So whatever the input is from the user, it's going to be converted or stored as an integer. We'll do that for the second number as well. We'll run this code again. We'll use those same numbers as our input, 10 and 5. And there we go, we see the correct result there. It's 15. And we also see class int or integer for both of those variables. Okay, if we wanted to do that with floats, we can do that with float as well. We can just say float instead of int. So we could do something like 10.2 and 5.3. And we get 15.5 and we see they're both float values. So that's how to get input from the user and store user input in variables and also how to convert uh, values to float and integer. And we can use this float or int function to convert any kind of value. So if we already have a variable, let's just say we have number equals 10 and we store it as a string and uh, put it inside quotes that value um, that's going to be a string variable so if we say print type number we're going to see class string okay but we can convert this so we could say number equals int number int number and then we can print the type now, so a number. And we see initially it's string, and after changing it using that int function there, it's now a type int or integer. Okay, so here what we've actually done is not change the value, uh, but change its type. Okay, if we wanted to change the value we could, uh, if we wanted to change it to 15, we could now do that and without the need for quotes because it's now stored as an integer. So we could print out number after changing its value. We see 15 instead of 10, and we also see that it's now an integer. All right, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at decision-making in programs, so using something called the if statement. Thanks for watching.